Hi guys, okay, so in the last lesson, we looked at modulus argument form or polar form, which was this way of writing a complex number or cos theta plus i times sine theta. And it it is basically, well, it is exactly the same as this. Cis theta is just a fancy way of writing cos theta plus i times sine theta. And I mentioned that you can also write a complex number in this form, and this is called Euler's form, and it's or e to the i theta. Once you have or and theta here, you've got Euler form, you just write it like this, right? So it's, you actually could probably do this lesson. But I do want to kind of show you where this whole thing comes from, because it's actually really, really interesting. Now, well, having said that, I'm not going to be able to show you completely where it comes from, because, well, it comes from calculus that you may or may not have studied, but I'm not going to go into it here in this lesson. So depending on which order you've gone through the topics, um, you may or may not have seen this lesson. But I do, if I have a lesson in my calculus session where I derive this formula. And this is actually Euler's, this is actually called Euler's formula. This is Euler's formula. So pretty impressive formula where he connects um, E and I and uh, the trig ratios cos and sine. But even more impressive or the nicer thing that comes out of this is Euler's identity is when when you put theta in for sorry, when you put pi in for theta, you get E to the I pi, E to the I pi equals cos of pi plus I to the sine I sine of pi. Um, which gives you e to the i pi equals zero plus i, sorry, what am I doing? Um, it gives you negative one plus zero, or e to the i theta plus one equals zero. And this, again, apologies if I've, if you've already heard me say this, but this is the most beautiful equation in the world. If you Google what's the most beautiful equation in the world or just beautiful equation, this will come up straight away. Um, and it is beautiful. If you look at it, it's beautiful because it's incredible that it can, it, can, it connects E, I and pi, which seemingly when you first learn what those numbers are, this is some random thing to do with um, compound interest. This is the square root of negative one. And this is the ratio of the circumference of a circle to the diameter of a circle. It connects these with two more very important constants in mathematics, one, zero, i, pi, and e. They are five of the most famous constants in, in all of mathematics. Um, and you have an addition, a multiplication, and an exponent all in the one thing. So it's, it's really quite bizarre how this could possibly uh, equal it but once you go and it, it involves the Maclaurin series once you learn about the Maclaurin series and you go through the whole topic and it takes quite a, there's a lot of different parts that you need to understand but you will completely understand where this comes from and once you do it's really 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 nice anyway this is a thing this is a thing and this leads us to simply changing instead of writing cos theta plus i times sine theta we just have e to the i theta. So now once I find theta, and or is obviously just or this times or this times or whatever. Once you have theta and or, you, you have Euler's form. So that's it. Let's write some things in Euler's form. So we're going to do these two to begin with. So I'll go through them fairly quickly. Minus one plus plus i in Euler's form. Now I always draw my diagram. Now I'll do it fairly roughly here. So and it's minus one plus i, so it's somewhere here. This is 1. This is 1, because you're going up i. This, remember, I like to say this is alpha, and then this is theta. So theta is the big, this big angle here. This is theta. So if I want to get, if I want to get, um, let's get alpha first, the, t the well, I know I'm gonna get R first, let's get R first. So, um, well really, hang on, really I should have said Z equals and Z 
equals so let's let's get r so r is the magnitude of z which is the square root of one squared plus one squared uh, which is well one squared plus one squared equals root two so r is root two and then i'll get alpha first so the tan of alpha tan of alpha is one so alpha is pi over four alpha is pi over four um which means theta therefore theta i'll write it up here um just so I have space for the next question theta is equal to pi minus pi over four which is three pi over four so now look it's the same way i, I can write it in polar form or I can write it, I can say z is equal to or, so let me go back to the formula booklet. It's or e to the i theta, so or is root 2, or e to the i times theta, which is 3 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. So that is this written in Euler form. Now you can do this with your you can do this with your calculator. Um, you can write this in in Euler form. Let's let's just let's do that right now. Let me get rid of some of this. So I have minus one plus i uh, minus one negative one plus i is here, and then I go menu number complex numbers tool complex number tools convert to polar and yeah we had this in the last thing it's polar is actually euler form so it puts it in order form so i have e to the i times 3 pi over 4 this is um this is 3 pi over 4 and this is root 2 so they there you go and um, obviously you need to be able to do it without a calculator as well let's do one more Part B minus two minus two root three. So we're down here. Minus two minus two minus two root three. Something like this. So this is two. This is two root three. This is alpha. And then this is theta. Uh, Z or R is equal to the magnitude of Z which is the square root of, look at that, I should have done that properly, the square root of 2 squared plus um, 2 squared plus 2 root 3 squared. Let's close this thing here, which gives me the square root of 4. This is 4 plus 4 times uh, that's 4 times 3, which is 12. That's going to be nice because that's going to be 16. The square root of 16 is 4. Nice. And then I'm going to say tan alpha. Tan alpha is 2 root 3. 2 root 3 over 2, which is root 3. Alpha. I'm going to write this up here. Um, alpha is then equal to, what's the inverse tan of root 3? Well, it is pi over pi over 3 and therefore theta if I have alpha theta is just going to be um, theta is going to be my remember it's minus right so alpha is just the angle pi over 3 and then theta is going to be pi, um, it's minus pi plus pi over 3 but it's just going to be a negative whatever this angle is and that's going to be 2 over 3 so it's negative 2 pi over 3. Okay, um, and then I have R, it's 4, I have theta, I can just write Z is equal to 4E to the I times, um, well, it's negative, so I'm going to do I times negative 2 pi over 3. You could put the negative here, but it it's, looks better like that. Okay, good. That's that's the first bit done. Now we need to be able to convert between um, Cartesian form, which is our kind of rectangular form, this form, to polar form, which is our cis form, and Euler form. We need to be able to convert between any one of them to any one of the other ones. So, I mean, once you... 
once you have once you, to, to convert from this to polar form or Euler form, it's basically the same thing. You just find your R and you find your theta. So you know how to do that. And then to go backwards, to go from this into Cartesian form, we just say, well, um, you have to kind of go into, into, write this in polar form and Cartesian form. All right, so I'm doing them both. Um, let's do polar form, polar form first. First, but when you convert this into Cartesian for into Cartesian form, I can't talk today. When you convert this into Cartesian form, you have to go into polar form anyway. So, um, yeah. So we're gonna learn how to do it anyway. So, uh, four. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say four e to the i pi over three is equal to four times cos of pi over three plus i times sine of pi over 3. This is my Euler form into polar form because r is 4 and theta is pi over 3. r is 4, theta is pi over 3. Fine. So that's it actually in polar form. Or you can write that as 4 cis pi over 3. And then to turn this into Cartesian form, you just say, well, you just multiply it out. So you just work it out. Cos of pi over 3. I know cos of pi over 3 is pi over 3. That is 1 over 2. 1 over 2 plus i times sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. And then you multiply this out. So that's going to give me 2 plus um, 2 plus uh, what is it for? 2, two, two root 3 i. And again, let's do that one with the calculator. Say I have 4 times e to the power of i. So it's i times pi over 3. i times uh, pi over 3. And then if I want to convert, if I want to convert this, so menu, um, number, complex number tools, if I want to convert this to rectangular form, that's what they call Cartesian form, I just do that and I get 2 plus, and again, this is 2 root 3. Yeah, that looks about right. This is 2 root 3i, so 2 plus 3.46401i. There you go. Okay, now I want to do three more questions because these two answer nicely. Why? What's the use in Euler form? Well, I personally, and I'd like to think you might as well think, well, that's a way nicer. That's a that's a really nice form to deal with. E to the i, e to the i the or e to the i theta. It's all nicely this just there in one term and its exponents. So look, if I'm multiplying out these, if I'm going to multiply these out together. This times this, I just do 4 times 5 is 20. And then if I'm multiplying um, e to the i pi over 3 times e to the i pi over 4, the base is the same. So this is just like, this is just like a to the m times a to the n equals a to the m plus n. I'm just adding the exponents. So it's 20 times e to the power of i times pi over 3 plus pi over 4. And that's actually just 20 e to the i times. That's 4 pi over 3 or, or 4 pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12, which is 7 pi over 12. There you go, done. So it's much easier to multiply complex numbers when they're in Euler form, much, much easier. Imagine, well, we've done it, multiplying it out in rectangular form. And then look at this, when it gets even more complicated, like to the power of 6. Imagine trying to multiply a a Cartesian complex number, or imagine working it out to the power of 6. Well, watch how easy this is. I just say 2 to the power of 6 is 64. And then e to the power of i to the power of 2 to the power of 6, well, that's your a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of mn. You just multiply the exponents. So it just becomes e to the power of a times, sorry, i times 6 pi over 2, which is actually just 3 pi. There you go. 
Now this just this touches on which I'm, what I'm going to do in the next lesson. Whereas if you actually, when you multiply complex numbers or if you raise them to a power what you're actually what what actually happens is you rotate it because if you if you raise this to the power of 2 you get e e to the power of i pi to the power of 3 you get 3 pi over 2 to the power of 4 you get 4 pi over 2 to the power of 5 you get 5 pi over 2 so it's it's actually rotating it i'll get into that in more detail in the next in the next lesson last one and this perhaps looks a bit this looks a bit strange. Three, three to the power of i. What's that got to do with Euler's form? Well, this is a, there's a little trick to this. And to actually pause the video and see if you can figure out how I can write this in in polar form. But the trick is, you write this as e to the power. So three is actually e to the power of ln of three. We know that rule because e to the, if. Um, e to the ln of x equals x. So e to the ln of 3 is 3. So this is actually um, 3. And then this to the power of i, so 3 to the power of i equals 3 to the power of i, which equals um, e to the, again, this is our a to the m to the power of n equals a to the mn uh, rule. So this is e to the power of i ln of 3. So now I have my my uh, or equals 1 because it's just what's before this. And my theta is e to the i theta. So my theta is ln of 3. So this 3 to the i equals um, cos cos ln of 3 plus i times sine i times sine of ln of 3 okay so that's just a few nice examples absolutely the main thing i want you to be able to do is this i want you to be able to convert from this form cartesian form into this and this and this this into this and this and this into this and this. So any of the three into any of the other two. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed that. And um, I'll see you in our next video.